Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So as the gate exam is approaching, we only have one or two days for the gate exam. It is very important to also practice multiple selective type question that is MSQ type question. Uh, this type of question has been recently added in the gate exam uh, like gate uh, syllabus and they have been added since 2021 gate. Okay, so we do not have much reference from the previous years of gate exams because Earlier there was no MSQ type questions in GATE but now you are going to have them. In 2021 we had and in 2022 again we will be having questions from MSQ. So what reference we have is JAM exam because in IIT JAM exam they usually used to take MSQ type questions. So I am going to take some previous years of question from JAM level and we will see that how to solve them or how to approach them. Uh, before going into it let me just first of all tell you few things about MSQ type questions that there will be total of 10 MSQ type questions okay so there will be 10 questions from MSQ type second thing is that these MSQ type questions uh, does not carry any negative marking so there will be no negative marking for that okay so no negative marking for that and one more thing is that there is no partial marking as well so partial marking is not there partial marking not available what it is what is partial marking so basically if let's say there is a question uh, which has option a b c and d and let's say if the correct options for the question are a b and c okay let's say these three are the correct option but in exam you only choose b and c or you only choose a and b so you didn't choose all the three a b and c in that case you will not get any marks okay this thing must be very clear to you that there is no partial marking scheme so Partial marking means if you if there are three options uh, correct options and if you just do two of them then you are not going to get any marks for that. So this thing should be very much clear to you. So now I am going to take some questions and I am going to show you that how you can approach it how you can solve it. Basically it will be done just like any MSQ question or like just like any MCQ question. Just the thing is that you have to take care of the thing key you are marking all the correct answers or not. Okay, So let's take the first question here. It says for the reaction shown in the scheme one, the concentration profile of the different species are provided. Okay, so this is the concentration profile provided to you. It says based on the graph, the correct condition regarding the rate constant is okay. What is the correct condition for the rate constant? Now, uh, first of all, you have to see that you are forming like the rea reactant is R and the final product is P. You are forming the product P through two routes. One is through S and the other one is through Q. So one like you can write it down in two ways one is like r to s and then to p so it say it is k1 and it is k3 and one more reaction is there so r to q and then to p so these are like two consecutive reactions right now you have to look upon the profile diagram over here uh, one thing is very clear that r is on the reactant side so its concentration is decreasing so that's correct okay so r is always decreasing now one thing which you can see is that the concentration of P is increasing at a higher range. So if the concentration of P is increasing with the higher range that means that the rate constant associated with the with the formation of P should be bigger okay that should be bigger here. Uh, next thing is the concentration of Q first increasing and then decreasing let us look upon them one by one okay. So first of all let us see that is there any relationship between K1 and K3 so yes there is a relationship between K1 and K3 let us look upon it like this. So it says ki K3 is greater than K1, K3 greater than K1 that means rate of formation of S is going to be uh, smaller because K1 is smaller and K3 is bigger. So rate of formation of P is fast. So that means the time or the time for which S is formed is very small time. Okay, So it's P, uh, sorry, S is going to be formed for very small duration. So what does that mean? It means if I draw the curve profile for S, so S will slowly get formed but as soon as S, S will form, it will dissociate and it will get converted into P. So what about because P is associated with K3 and S is associated with K1. So that means S will follow the profile which is shown as it is and what about P? So P should be formed with a higher rate like that. Okay, So the, the way it is shown here. So that means according to the profile, this is a correct statement. Let us see whether there is any relation between K2 and K4. So yes, there it is. It says that K2 is greater than K4. So that means rate of formation of Q is higher than rate of formation of P. That means Q will be formed with a higher rate initially and once the Q will be formed, 
then it will dissociate into p so q will be having a uh, it will not have very small uh, concentration or it will not have very small duration for formation it will stay for a little bit of time so that's why you can see that q's concentration of q is increasing with a very high rate because this this graph is increasing with a very high rate so that means that k2 is very high or k2 is bigger and then it is slowly decreasing and as it is decreasing p is increasing so this is also a correct statement according to the profile let's talk about c it says k2 is greater than k1 k2 and k1 so k2 is the rate of formation of q and k1 is the rate of formation of s so that means rate of formation of q is higher as compared to the rate of formation of s so that is correct see the q is getting formed with a higher rate see always remember that this slope the the curve or the slope denotes the rate okay so the rate of formation of q is quite higher and the rate of formation of s is smaller so this is also correct and this option number d is wrong where it says k1 and k2 are uh, same so that is not correct because the rate of formation of q and s are different so according to the profile or statement or uh, option a b and c all are correct so the correct option for this question is going to be a b and c in case if you choose all the three then only you will get the complete marks if you choose any one of them or if you if you does not choose or if you do not choose any one of them in that case you will not get any marks from this question okay and remember there is no negative marking also so it's safe to do this question. okay let's take this question it says the a chiral stereoisomer uh, possible for you have to look upon the molecule you are given with the four options you have to tell that which of them is a a chiral stereoisomer so to answer this question you have to look upon the concept of chirality along a chiral axis so this particular molecule is a alene type of molecule and it has a chiral axis right so this chiral axis makes the molecule uh, overall molecule a chiral molecule similarly if you look upon option number b there also it's uh, it has a chiral axis and that's why this molecule also becomes chiral along this axis option number c is a meso compound because if you see so there is a plane of symmetry which passes through the molecule and that makes the molecule a chiral so a chiral stereoisomer you have to choose option c will be one of them and option d also has a plane of symmetry which is going to bisect the molecule into two equal half so that is also one of the a chiral stereoisomer so the option for this question should be c and d all right look, let's look upon this question it says that the compound which will have only two signals in the proton nmr spectrum in 3 is to 2 ratio so let's look upon that which molecule will have only two signals in the proton nmr spectrum so if you see option number a how many types of uh, proton will be there so proton of type a proton of type b and proton of type c because here will be the uh, plane of symmetry looking upon option b so here again i'll have a plane of symmetry and I have proton of type A, type A, uh, type B, type B, uh, type C and type D, right. In option number C, you will see that again you have a plane of symmetry and that makes proton of type A and A and this is B and you also have one more point of symmetry, a plane of symmetry. This is also B, this is also B, this is also B. So you will see that A type of protons are 3 and 3, methyl groups are there, so 6 and B type of proton are 1, 2, 3, 4, so 4. The ratio between them will be 3 is to 2. So that is one of the option. Let's look upon option number D. So again here also you have a plane of symmetry. And if you look upon, so you have proton of type A, type A and type B and type B. So A type of proton is again a 6 and B type of proton are 4. So the ratio is again 3 is to 2. So that makes uh, the correct option to be C and D both. Okay. So for this question, the, uh, the molecule or the compound having two signals in the proton NMR with 3 to 2 ratio will be C and D. So option C and D will be your correct option. The next question says that among the following molecule, microwave active molecule is R. Okay, so microwave active for in order to become microwave active molecule, what is the necessary or what is the selection rule that there should be a permanent dipole moment, right? So that's required. If you look upon option number A, it's trans dichloroethene. So trans dichloroethene, right? So that's the molecule. Second option is 1 to dinitrobenzene. So let's make it benzene and it is 1 to dinitro. 2 and NO2. Option number C is 3 methylphenol. So that makes something like this. 3 methylphenol. Fourth option is 
para amino phenol so we have para amino phenol we have oh and n so looking upon the molecule you will see that this molecule the first one does not have a permanent dipole moment because the dipolarity are going to get cancelled out each other so overall the molecule is non planar mole uh, sorry non dipolar or uh, non polar molecule so option a is the wrong option 1 to dinitrobenzene will have a overall dipole moment because the polarity will be added up and the overall dipolarity is going to be in this direction so it is having a permanent dipole moment option number c also has uh, some amount of dipole moment because of uh, the groups being asymmetrically attached so yes option b is one of them option c is one of them and option d also will have certain dipole moment because oxygen being more electronegative nitrogen being less electronegative there will be a overall dipole moment in this direction okay so that's why d will also be microwave active so the correct option for this will be b c and d all three right let's talk about this question it says uh, the unit of constant a in the wonder wall equation of a state in the real gas can be expressed as now if you look upon the options it's meter to the power 6 pascal per meter square uh, per mole square it's uh, mole to the power 6 joules uh, per mole square and then meter cube pascal uh, per mole square and then uh, meter cube joules per mole square so first and uh, the most important basic thing which you should know that how to convert joules into pascal and meter cube so one joule is equals to one pascal uh, meter cube okay this value you should know and if you have watched my video on unit conversion single shot video i have discussed this thing so this has been done already over there all right so you can just consider this thing and considering this now you have to look upon now what you have to do next is you look upon real gas equation so Although you don't need the complete real gas equation, just a part of it where the pressure correction is done. So there we have P plus A N square upon V square. So that is the uh, like that's what we have as the uh, real gas equation, a part of the real gas equation. Although the equation is like V minus N B also, but that you don't need. So this much is the pressure correction part, right? Uh, and according to the unit rule or dimensional rule, it is always said ki two things can be only added if their unit or their dimension is same what does that mean it means dimension of pressure or the unit of pressure should be equal to the dimension of a n square upon v square that should be same or you can say that your a n square upon v square should be having a dimension of p or a should have a dimension of p into v square divided by n square now put the values or put the units of all of them so a like unit of a should be pressure is written in pascal so the unit of pressure is pascal volume has a unit of meter cube so whole to the power 2 divided by mole right number of moles it is square of that so this is going to become pressure meter to the power 6 and per mole okay per mole square so that is coming up in your option uh, this is pascal okay so this is coming up in option number a so option a is correct according to it second thing is you have to use joule to do it so one pascal into meter cube is equal to one joule so if you replace uh, a meter to the power three and pascal that can be replaced by joules you will be left out with meter cube and mole to the power minus two this should also be one of the unit of it so that's there in your option number d so option number a is correct and option number D is correct. These two are going to be the correct uh, unit of A in the Van der Waal equation. So the correct answer should be uh, option A and option. All right. Let's see the next question. Okay. The next question is pretty simple. It says that the correct statement about NO2, NO2 plus and CO2 plus. This is from your inorganic chemistry from the concept of your electronic configuration of the molecule. Okay. So I am giving this as a practice questions for you guys so you guys have to practice and tell me the answer in the comment section below just make it as question number one of practice okay so question one of practice give your answer in the comment what should be the correct option okay it's a msq type question so make sure you you are looking upon it very correctly okay so it is based upon the magnetic behavior and also based upon the geometry so look upon it very carefully and tell me which is the correct statement according to it 
द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अगेन इट सेज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग सेट ऑफ क्वांटम नंबर्स आर नॉट अलाउड विच ऑफ देम आर नॉट अलाउड रिमेंबर दैट एन वैल्यू कैन बी एनीथिंग बट एल शुड बी लाइक एन माइनस वन ओके सो एन एल शुड ऑलवेज स्टार्ट फ्रॉम एन माइनस वन सो कंसिडरिंग दैट ऑप्शन नंबर सी इज नॉट अलाउड दिस इज नॉट अलाउड बिकॉज एन एंड एल बोथ आर बिकमिंग सेम ओवर हेयर राइट एंड इफ यू लुक अपॉन फॉर एम एल वैल्यू तो एम एल वैल्यू गोज फ्रॉम माइनस एल टू प्लस एल राइट दैट्स हाउ इट गोज एंड एम एल कैन नेवर बी ग्रेटर देन योर एल वैल्यू राइट सो कंसिडरिंग दैट सो इफ योर एल इज जीरो योर एम एल कैन नॉट बी माइनस वन रिमेंबर दैट एम एल इज ऑलवेज स्मॉलर देन और इक्वल टू योर एल वैल्यू ओके एंड इट शुड गो फ्रॉम माइनस एल टू प्लस एल कंसिडरिंग दैट फैक्ट स्टेटमेंट लाइक ऑप्शन नंबर बी इज ऑल्सो इन करेक्ट ऑप्शन नंबर ए इज करेक्ट इफ यू हैव एल इज इक्वल्स टू टू तो एम एल वैल्यूज कैन बी लाइक फ्रॉम माइनस टू माइनस वन जीरो प्लस वन प्लस टू ओके सो एम एल पॉसिबल वैल्यूज आर माइनस टू माइनस वन जीरो प्लस वन प्लस टू तो यस इट्स अ करेक्ट थिंग स्टेटमेंट नंबर डी और ऑप्शन नंबर डी ऑल्सो गिव्स यू करेक्ट थिंग ओनली बिकॉज एन इज फाइव एल इज थ्री सो एम एल कैन बी लाइक प्लस थ्री सॉरी फ्रॉम स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम माइनस थ्री तो माइनस थ्री माइनस टू माइनस वन जीरो Uh, plus one, plus two, and plus three. So yes, it is there. So these are correct. A and D are correct. But it was asked ki which are not allowed. So your answer should be B and option number C. So this is how you have to do this question. One more question is there. Again, I am giving this as a practice question. Consider it as a practice number two. Practice question number two. So this is again a practice questions for you guys. So it says among the following, the species having seesaw shape. it's based upon the concept of vsepr i hope this all of you know and you all will be able to do this please let me know in the comment section below what is the correct answer for this all right let's look upon this question which was asked from bio organic chemistry it says that the heme containing protein is r okay and you have four options uh, it's directly dependent upon your uh, your uh, bio organic chemistry if you have studied it you will be able to answer it very quickly uh, cytochrome c has a heme group it's a heme containing group or it is a heme protein myoglobin is a very well known heme containing group or you can say heme containing protein hemocyanin is not heme containing group it is having a copper based and a dioxygen attached to them like this so this is one of them which does not have heme containing group and heme merethrin again is iron containing or it has iron base attached with a oxygen oxygen comes over here like this so heme merethrin again does not have heme group the heme containing protein are option number a and option number d so these will be your correct option all right now let's look upon the last question which is again going to be a practice question for you guys so this is practice question number 3 practice number 3 so it says that the diatomic molecule that has uh, that has or have two pi type bond you have to look upon that which of these molecule have two pi bonds that's it okay Uh, if you guys want hint, I'll let you guys know in the comment section. Like, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to give you a hint over there. But it's pretty simple. You just have to look that which of these molecule has two uh, pi bonds. Okay. So remember how to count pi bonds, and that is where you are going to make might make mistake or might not make mistake. So that's it for this video. I just tried to give you a quick video on MSQ type question just to make you guys uh, understand that what type of questions can be asked. and how to approach it or basically uh, if i msq type of question is asked what is the way to look upon it okay there is no uh, like there is no proper method for it just you have to look upon the options and you have to choose that whether the options which you are choosing all of them satisfy the given condition or not all right so that's it from my side for this particular video i will see you guys in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care hey guys so i teach live on an academy plus platform Here I teach for the CSI or UGC net category, and you can follow me over here for regular classes. You can access my free classes as well as my paid classes on this particular platform. The classes which are free, you can get that under the section of special classes. Whereas in order to access my paid classes, paid live classes, we have to take an Academy Plus subscription. So do make sure that you take the An Academy Plus subscription to access all my paid classes, which are quite organized. The whole syllabus is being completed over there, and the classes are quite regular over there. So make sure that you take An Academy Plus subscription by using my referral code that is N underscore Huda. 
that's it for this thank you so much